YouTube Nation. Maven TV, a.k.a. Me TV, a.k.a. The NHL is back, and I'm already pissed off, man. You gotta be kidding me. And I'm not just talking about the Flyers. I'm talking about the way things were handled on the first day. That's right, the first day of hockey being back on TV. And that goes on NBC. I want to talk about this because, as we all know as hockey fans, we want to see our teams in our respective regions, do we not? Okay, so, when it happened, they started showing the Flyers at first. There was a pregame show, and then they started, just, uh, they started showing the Flyers, you know, warm up at the Wells Fargo Center. So we're like, all right, this game is getting ready to start soon. Anybody who's ever been to a hockey game knows when they come out, they come out and do their shooting drills. Uh, Breeze comes out and does his goalie drills. They go back in the tunnel, and then they come back out. All right, so, and then they do the national anthem and things like that. I will get into that in a minute, okay? So as for, the, for those who don't know how, you know, if you've ever been to the Flyers game, that's how it works. Now, I will put it like this. So the Flyers are warming up, right? And they cut away, NBC, they cut away from them warming up to go to the Kings, the LA Kings. So, of course, they're the Stanley Cup champions. We have to see them bring out the Stanley Cup. We got to see them raise the banner. Let me get some. let's get some straight here, all right? I don't care. I don't have anything against the Kings, but I don't care. It's the first day of hockey. I want to see my team. It's that simple. I don't want to sit here and have to see the LA Kings hoist up, hoist up the banner and, and, and go around with the players again, holding up the Stanley Cup because we saw it last, last season. We don't need to see it again. It's okay for in LA if you want to see that. That's fine because that's your team. I understand that. But we here don't need to see that. Okay? And I understand this is not the Kings' fault. This is NBC's fault because they did this. Now, during this time where we're seeing all this inauguration, I'm thinking to myself, the Flyers game had that start already. And don't you know, the radio stations were like, yeah, the puck is dropped. We're already underway. You can listen to us on the radio. Everyone is reporting on Twitter the game has started. Yet, we're still sitting here watching the LA Kings. Hoist up the cup. What's going on here? I don't get this. So Flyers fans are jumping all over NBC because they, they mishandled this. They really did. And the, the complaints got so bad that NBC actually had to put on the bottom of the screen that, you know, don't worry, Flyers fans, your game's coming up soon. So, yeah, this is what they showed. Now, with multiple and local stations sitting here saying, we have it here, you can listen to it here, and we can't see it on TV, do you know what that means? We're on tape delay. So you're going to tell me i got to wait in my region to watch my team because you want us to watch the LA Kings hoist up the cup again. Are you serious? Now, look, I'll put it like this. This is not the Kings' fault. This is not their fans' fault. This is NBC's fault for messing this up. That's what it is. Now, I want to talk about this a little bit because this bothered me a little bit, too. For those who've watched hockey and know hockey and played hockey, you know introduction music for since, what, the 80s? Since the 80s has been rock music, metal music, you win the cup, we are the champions of the world, all that stuff, all that good stuff, we all know that, right? Okay, why is it that the LA Kings brought down the cup to pop dance music? What, what's that? Is that how y'all getting down? I don't understand this, all right? Is this is what hockey has come to? I don't get this. Now, you know, I want to talk about this a little bit more because even though they forced us to sit and watch the LA Kings, you know, hoist up the cup again, you know what I mean? Which makes no sense since the game was already on. It'd be different if it wasn't, but it was already on. All right? I'll put it like this. The top five markets over the weekend, because I'll put the link in the info bar for you guys, uh, was it? They said that hockey had its biggest inauguration this year. All right? Biggest ratings this year. The top five markets were, uh, was it Pittsburgh, Philadelphia? It was Buffalo, Chicago, and Boston. Do you know what that means? That means that your Stanley Cup champions, the LA Kings didn't even make the top five. They weren't even on the radar when it came to ratings. There's a problem. There's a big problem. All right, so it goes to show you that NBC tried to force something and it didn't work well. Now I want to talk about the Flyers versus the Penguins, all right? Big time game. I was looking, you know, really looking forward to it. Flyers pretty much laid an egg. And I'm not going to jump on the Penguins for, you know, for playing because the play Penguins came to play, all right? That's, that's what we got. Now, for those who don't know, over this week, since this has been starting, there's been Penguins fans walking down the street in their Penguins hats and jerseys, and people are just giving them all types of looks. And I'm like, is it that serious? Yes, it's that serious, all right? People are yelling at each other, you know, just on the street, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, whatever. It's one of the biggest rivalries in hockey, okay? It just is. Now, here's the thing, which is still baffles me why you would put on tape delay. So, anyways... So the Penguins played, and the Flyers, you know, the Flyers looked horrible. They did. And I had to hear a, a, so many apologists that day on Twitter. Well, you know, the Flyers, they only had six days of practice, and they don't have any chemistry, and a lot of them haven't played false. Let's get something straight here. Was it? 19 out of 25 Flyers, all right? 
played overseas. They've been playing. Chemistry, not a big deal if you ask me. You want to know why? Because these players have been playing these positions all their life. That's why. All right? That's what it comes down to. I'm not trying to hear they had six days of training camp. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to hear that. All right? A lot of these guys have been in shape already because they played overseas. I'm not trying to hear it. All right? But you've been playing this game all your life. You know your position. You know your assignments. I'm not trying to hear it. Defense laid an egg. Breeze played. He played pretty good in the in the first game. All right? He played pretty good. All right? That deflection goal, I'm not going to get on him about. But he did give up that uh, second goal straight up. That's only one goal, though. You know what I mean? He played solid. I, I, I didn't want to say it on Twitter as much because I didn't want to jinx him. <laughs> Y'all know how that goes. So he played solid in the first game. But here's the thing. After all we saw with the Penguins, near the end when the Flyers are actually getting ready to press and try to score, the refs call penalty on them. And here's the thing. Now, regardless what you feel as a Penguins fan or a Flyers fan, what happened in that penalty against Giroux, that's a flop. It's a flop. And I'm playing Letang. Flopping. That's what you know. What, let's see what it looks like. Like I said, no matter if you are a Penguins fan or not, a flop is a flop, all right? Just call it as it is. And you're flopping in the first game of the year? You serious? Seriously. You know what? It's fine. But, you know, on Sunday, we played against the Buffalo Sabres. The Flyers, once again, blew it. And it seems like the Flyers are a one-period team right now because the first period, they get destroyed. And the second period, they play with a lot of heart. And third period, they just phone it in. That's what it feels like. And the Sabres did the same thing. Actually, in the third period with the Sabres, I thought that they were just uh, just trying to play a little bit conservative and just try to protect their lead. That's what it felt like at first. But I don't understand how there's times where the Flyers on a power play, you pull your goalie at the end on the power play, all right, and you still can't get out of your own zone. How is this possible? It's a six on four, and you can't get out of your zone. It makes no sense. And like I said, Breeze, there was times where he blew it, but a lot of it was defense. A lot of it was. It made no sense to me. There's a problem here. And you know what? Having a short season for as short as it is, what, 48 games? And you're down 0-2 now? You have, you're have you down two games? It's You're in trouble. This is why I didn't want the NHL to come back so short. Because now it's a mad dash to get into the playoffs. People have to be you know, pretty much on their grind. They have to be at their top performance. And as we all know, there's a lot of teams out there who have not practice. There's a lot of guys who have not played overseas or whatever. But the Flyers, they've had a lot of guys. There's no excuses. All right? They should be primed and ready to go. They really should. I don't understand this. So pretty much, if we're going to make the playoffs, and because people are saying, we're going to the Cup, we're going to the Cup, stop. Stop. As much as I want a Stanley Cup just as bad as anybody else, I put it like this. You cannot two games in sit here and say we're going to the Cup. You can't do that. That is absolutely ridiculous. All right? But if we're going to the Cup and we're going to the playoffs, we have to ride a hot goalie. And you know what that means. Breeze has to show up. He just has to. And just for some just some fun fact for you guys, yesterday, Bobrovsky, yeah, Bob played staying on his head. Yeah. Goes to show you. All right? You got rid of the wrong guy. Just saying, you just did. But like I said, guys, hockey is back. I'm pissed off. I do have my season tickets or what's left of the season. I go on Thursday. So that's when my season tickets start. Should be fun, but seriously, stop talking Stanley Cup. Stop talking. Stop. You see how many problems we have? There's this Shen. Both of those Shens, all right, over the weekend made us look bad. Both brothers, all right, on the offense and defensive side. They did. They just were not prepared. They were getting destroyed all weekend. There's, you say, when you look at the players and see what happens, Coburn, you know, I've already. You already know how I feel about Coburn. He shouldn't even be out there. He blew a number of assignments over the weekend. I'm, I want to move on to football. I do. All right? It's ridiculous. The Flyers play tonight against the Devils. I will be, you know, watching or whatever. I, anyways, let's move on to football. Football. All right? I put it like this. I was writing my picks. Uh, was it over the weekend? 
Ravens go to the Super Bowl, 49ers go to the Super Bowl. I had so many of you guys ask me who's going to win the Super Bowl. I'm not going to make my pick yet till next week, all right, because that's when I'll do it, the setup for the Super Bowl. I want to look into more stuff. Uh, we got the Pro Bowl this week, and you know what? I don't care. Is anyone really going to watch the Pro Bowl anyway? It's a joke. It is. You know, at one point, I remember a couple years ago, I made a video saying that, you know, the Pro Bowl used to have this high prestige, and it used to. And now it doesn't because players don't take it as seriously. They just don't. They don't. But also, I want to talk about this as well. Um, with football, I knew the Falcons were going to lose because we saw the game before where they were up by 20 and almost blew it to Seattle. They were up by 17 this week and pretty much blew, blew that as well. San Francisco adjusted. Uh, they should have. But Julio Jones and Roddy White, these guys are a problem. These guys are a problem. You have to put not even much as White, but Julio Jones is just going crazy on them in the first quarter. He's a problem. You have to put him up there receiver-wise with some of the best. You have to. It's just impossible not to at this point. The, the cornerbacks on San Francisco, they were getting killed. They were getting killed. Before they made the adjustments, they were getting killed. It was pitch and catch out there. And I didn't understand why it took San Francisco so long to get to Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is having all day out there. He could do his taxes out there and just throw the pitch and catch all day. I didn't understand it. I just don't. But you know what? Also, the other game, I knew the Ravens were going to show up. I said the Ravens had something to prove. We saw what happened with, you know, with the Patriots. Tom Brady, you know what? I'm really tired of Tom Brady. I really am. Not because I don't like him as an athlete. He's a great quarterback, okay? But he just throws these fits that I cannot stand because he's Tom Brady. He thinks that he should be catered to. It's garbage. When he slid and he raised his foot up to kick that guy, that's dirty. That's dirty. I'm going to put it like this. For those who don't know, you, when you see a quarterback slide, you have to keep your foot down. And when you see a quarterback slide, it's almost the same rules as baseball. For those who don't know, when you're sliding the home plate, you don't put your spikes up. That's dirty. You can hurt somebody. It's the same thing with football. You don't put your spikes up. That's what he did. All right? He knew what he was doing. He got frustrated. He threw that interception in the fourth quarter. Did you see his face? He looked like he wanted to cry. And you know, I was like, good. Good. And it's not like, I don't hate the Patriots. All right? Do I feel they cheated in those Super Bowls? I do. I do. But I don't hate the Patriots. All right? I thought it was classless of Tom Brady to act that way. And then Bill Belichick comes out, and then he acts classless. And y'all you know, don't want to do any interviews. And not only that, afterwards, Wes Walker, who kept dropping the ball constantly, you know what? Replay of last year. When we saw Wes Walker drop that ball, we had to hear, oh, it was Brady the way he threw it, and Walker's a better receiver than that. Here's your, here's your you know, your proof. Walker was dropping passes left and right. He was. I put it like this. After he dropped the number of passes, you should have checked off or you should have put someone else in. And here's the sad part. His wife comes out afterwards, and she absolutely goes off on Ray Lewis. I'm proud of my husband the way he played. Okay, that's fine. All right? But then she starts jumping on Ray Lewis. He was acquitted of murder. Blah, blah, and just starts going, oh, he's such a great role model. This is what she's saying. Look, football players, I don't understand this. You need to get your wives in control. We saw this with Jason Babin when he was here as well. All right? I understand you're going to back your man, but he is a football player. If anything, he should have taught you by now. If you lose, you lose with, you know, humility. You, you be humble about it. You don't start going after players. You don't do that. Especially when you're not in that position. You're his wife. You're not in that position to do that. All right? That is his zone. You let him take care of it. Now, if a woman had said something to him, then you come out and say something. Because then that's your role to say something. All right? Because he can't say nothing to a woman like that. Or, you know, well, he can, but not do anything else. You know what I mean? But that's your role to say something. As a wife. You don't start jawing at football players? What's wrong with you? This is getting out of hand with these football players and their wives. It just is. All right? We got the Ravens. We got the Niners in the Super Bowl. I expect it to be a very physical Super Bowl. And I'll put it like this. I will say this. The Ravens, Ray Rice has to run outside the lines. He just has to. I put it's 49ers. If you're going to have this offense, you have to run that option with Kaepernick. You just have to. All right? You have to. It gives you more of a threat. However, the Ravens have that defense that are just very physical. Your offensive line for the Niners is, is really damn good. I put like this. Offense-wise, the Niners have a lot of weapons, but the Ravens' secondary is better than the Niners' secondary, as we've seen it already. All right? We have. There's, there's no getting around that. And we have. All right? But I put like this. If the Niners can operate the slants and quick routes in, they have a chance. They just do. All right? Like I said, but Ravens also, they have a big threat, you know what I mean, when it comes to a one Torrey Smith. And if you can't stop Torrey Smith, it's pretty much over. Because Flacco's going to throw to him all day. You also have Anquan Bolden, who's another weapon. Like I said, this is going to be a great Super Bowl as far as I'm concerned. I will do all the, you know, all the talk about it next week, okay? Um, 
I do want to move on real quick to basketball. The Sixers have embarrassed themselves yet again, all right, on TNT. Now, this bothers me because not just because of the Sixers, but the fact that they had Charles Barkley and Reggie Miller out there talking, right? And everything that Charles Barkley and Reggie Miller are saying about the Sixers, yours truly and many others have said throughout the entire season and the season before it and the season before it. But for some reason, they're praised for it. Tell us something we don't already know. So why is it that us YouTubers, we can sit here and make these videos and talk about our teams to death with passion and tell you the ins and outs of these teams and we get ignored. But if Charles Barkley comes out here and says something, then you'll put him on the radio, you'll put him on TV and all this. He's saying the same exact thing. The same exact thing. I don't understand this. It's ridiculous. I understand the guy is a legend when it comes to basketball. I get it. But that doesn't mean that his opinion is more valid than anyone else's. And we've seen this time and time again. If you need more proof, go look on ESPN. Go watch ESPN. Look how many legends or football players can't speak on camera. Don't know what they're talking about on camera. They can play the game, but they don't really know the game. And that's the sad part. And it's not to take a knock at these legends. But there's a lot of these guys who have no business being on TV. And you know that and I know that. And that's real talk. All right? But, like I said, it's, it's ridiculous. The Sixers blew it again. And once it, this time, like I said, it was on TNT, so a lot of people saw it. Drew Holiday cannot keep carrying this team on his own. And then when he messes up, pretty much, that's it. When the wheels fall off on that, it's over. But these guys are not playing. These guys are being paid millions of dollars. They are not stepping up to their potential. Why are you still shooting the ball at the elbow? Why, why are you not taking the ball in the paint? I don't understand this. If nothing is working when it comes to shooting and you're going cold, go into the paint, hope you get a foul. All right, but you got to make a chance to go into the paint. That's where you get your open shots, your uncontested shots, because if you keep going into the paint, then when you kick it out, you got it because they're all crashing in. Don't you understand that? What is going on here with the Sixers? How is Duck? I'm telling you now, if this keeps happening, Duck Collins is going to be gone. He's going to be gone. It's that simple. And I'm not trying to hear Bynum is the answer. He's not. He's not the answer. And I've said that last week. He's not the answer. And I gave you a good reason why he's not. But whatever. Also, you guys asked me to talk about this man, man TTO thing, all right? I don't think I really need to say much due to the fact that everyone has talked about it, but this dude is playing everybody. He's a liar. He's involved. He knows what's going on. I'm not trying to hear he's a victim. Don't tell me that you're the guy, the big, the big cheese, the top guy on campus. You got all these girls around you who want a piece of you, and you're going to tell me that you're talking to some girl online, and you're going to tell me that you met her before, oh, then, then it was, you didn't meet her, but you spoke to her on the phone, then if you were a victim. I'm not trying to hear this. I'm not. He knew what he was doing. He wanted that Heisman badly. I know a lot of guys are saying now he made up this girl just to protect his sexuality because they really think that he's, uh, you know, that he's gay. I don't know, but I put it like this. I think he only did it to try to solidify, you know, a story so that he can have a better shot at the Heisman. I think that's what it was. I don't think it has anything to do with sexuality. He wanted that Heisman bad. And he made up a lot of garbage because of that. And here's the thing. Because a lot of uh, media guys now are coming out and saying, you know, when they heard these type of stories, you know, before they found out it was fake, they felt as though now they think they should take a stance where uh, they should ask more questions. They should butt into their uh, private lives. No. No. It's not, your, it's not your business to butt into his private life. If it leaked or whatever, whatever. All right. But it doesn't mean you go digging into a man's private life just because he plays football or basketball or whatever. That's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. You don't do that. If they give you a certain amount of stuff and say, OK, I'll talk about this and that's it. That's it. Respect it. You don't see these guys digging into your private lives. Right. Unless you get locked up. Right. OK, then. And we've seen that time and time again. Did we do we not? Just not too long ago. Was it uh, last year? We saw it with some media guys where they were battering their wives or whatever. And they get locked up for it. Like I said, you don't know about their private lives until it happens. So that doesn't give you the right to d dig into an athlete's private life unless he brings it up. Then it's different. But you don't do that purposely. That's horrible. Because you wouldn't want the same thing done to you, right? Okay, media, this is what I mean. You need to be a little bit more humble. It's wrong. It just is. That guy's a liar. I don't care about him. I don't even want to, you know, at this point, his character is shot. He's, oh, now he's getting ready to do a, uh, was it, interview, was it with Katie Kirk? Yeah, he's going to milk this to the end. That's what he's going to do. It's ridiculous. And Notre Dame is like, well, you know, we felt we had to say something. No, why didn't Notre Dame have to say anything? It's none of their business. Same thing's not in the media's business. But 
it is a lie. And he did, you know, rig it for that. I understand that. But you don't dig into people's personal lives just because. If he comes out and says that his grandmother was dead, you leave it at that. You don't come out and say, well, I want to see the birth certificate. You don't come out and say something like that. No, you don't. Anyways, I want to move on real quick. One more last thing. You guys asked me to talk a little bit more about Lance Armstrong. I got one thing to say about Lance Armstrong, all right? Because some of you guys made some great points in last week's comments, and I want to talk about this. You guys said he's made a joke of what, you know, the Cancer Foundation is about now. And you guys have said the way that, you know, they have marketed this is if you hate Lance Armstrong, then you're pro-cancer. That's absolutely horrible. And you put like this. It's interesting that you would say that because Nike has did this. Live Strong and Nike, they made that. You know what I mean? They put him on that pedestal. They made it that way. So if you hate Lance Armstrong, you're pro cancer. It's absolute garbage. A lot of you guys said now that he's trying to take out he's trying to take down everybody with him. And it's interesting because a lot of see a lot of people now cheering on Lance Armstrong for coming out and trying to take everyone out with him. But when Jose Canseco did it, everyone hated him. What's going on here? I don't understand this. See, it's a double standard and it's gotta stop. The fact is he got caught cheating. It's wrong. All right. I don't know why people are even deciding to, to, to back this guy. Like I said before, he had cancer. He got over it. I have no problem with that. It's good for him. I don't have a problem with that on a personal level with him. That's fine. I'm not going to touch that. That's him. That's his personal life. I applaud him for that. But anything else is wrong. You cheated to try and... I don't want to say inspire people because that's not what it was for. That wasn't Lance. Um, that's probably what Lance Armstrong thought at first. It would inspire people. But Nike and them, they weren't thinking that. They just saw it as a selling method. You know what I mean? Let's get the, you know, the yellow, you know, wristbands and all that type of stuff. They sold that stuff. They did that. Granted, it brought awareness. That's the only positive thing it did was bring awareness. But now, look what it's, it's come to. You are allowed to not like Lance Armstrong. That doesn't mean you're pro-cancer. It's ridiculous anybody would bring that up and think that it's okay to do. Like I said, you guys made some dead-on great points about that in the comments last week. So, I'm done. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all be safe. I'm out.